Hey you guys, I'm Brianna Lenz and today I had to catch them all. I had to make some plushy Pokemon, which I am so excited to share with you because that means that I'm done. <laughs> I have been promising my kids that I would make them Pokemon for an embarrassing amount of years. And here they are, the two really, really pretty plushies that I'm really, really proud of. Uh, made using, uh, made from patterns from the Pokemon crochet book that I bought off Amazon. I had originally bought this and uh, I was going to make Eevee and I decided, I'm more than halfway through with Eevee, but I decided to stop and I wanted to make velvet, uh, large velvet plush, plushy Pokemon for my kids because they feel like a Squishmallow and they're so awesome and I, it was a great choice. Will I ever finish Eevee? I don't know. I might DNF it. Um, or I might, and if I do, then I'll just make that a separate video and then I'll share it. But I made Psyduck and Jigglypuff. My six-year-old chose Jigglypuff. She loves to sing the Jigglypuff song. And then my daughter chose Psyduck, which is really fun. And, uh, my kids' favorite movie right now is Detective Pikachu, which actually is kid-friendly, even with Ryan Reynolds. I wasn't sure, but it, it's okay. Um, so yeah, I just thought that I would come on and share my thoughts with you about the Pokemon crochet book because I have done more than half of Eevee and what I felt, uh, you know, making Pokemon with this. And my lighting and stuff is a little bit off because I don't know where my tripod is. And I thought if I don't record this, then like if I don't, if I stop and I go find my tripod, like I'll never record this. And I wanted to get this out because it has been a while since I uploaded. So let me go ahead they do stand up on their own, but things never, never behave when you're on camera. So here is Jigglypuff. I'm really happy with how Jigglypuff turned out. The perfectionist in me is upset with the jagged lines for the eyes, but I did the eyes about four times and this was the best that I could get. And could I have gotten out my Cricut to do it? Yeah, but I'm happy. I'm happy and I'm happy with this because it's supposed to be more like a, but that's exactly how it is in the book. So um, let me show you this and then I'll show you Psyduck and then I'll talk details. And as you can see here is my head for reference and my body for reference, right? So cute. So here is Jigglypuff. And here is Psyduck. I just wanna make sure I don't catch it on anything because I have stuff back there for a fall. And then here is the back of Psyduck and the front, which I'm really glad she wanted Psyduck because that's personally one of my favorite. And again, for size comparison, here is my head and here is my body. Pretty, pretty good size. Fiona, my 10 year old says that she thinks that this would be the actual size of a Pokemon like in real life. So I think that's super fun. So this is uh, crocheted using velvety, the velvety smooth yarn from Hobby Lobby, which I always bought while it was on clearance, which it is on clearance this week. If you watch uh, when this move, when this movie, when this uh, video comes out, which is, I'm recording this on Labor Day, 2023. So this is uh, using velvety smooth yarn in mustard and ivory and black. And the only black that was needed was for this. So if you had probably like Red Heart Super Saver yarn, I'm sure it would be fine or something like that. And then I purchased for 25 cents white felt for the eyes. I embroidered with black embroidery th uh, thread, the nostrils, and then the eyes are just using uh, Sharpie. And I hot glued these on, which I might need to hot glue a little bit more so that way it doesn't come up. I just finished this guy this morning. So you have this, the head and the body is one piece. Then you have the arms that you sew on. You have the feet, which um, I learned something new. You have the feet and the toes. That was a new technique for me. And then I sewed those on. You have the beak, which you only stuff up to here. This is all unstuffed. And you sew that on, then you embroider the nostrils on, you hot glue the felt on, and then I um, I crocheted the hair all as one piece, five chain, five chain, five chain, 
and then you sew it on which i am I'm actually like so thrilled with how Psyduck came out. I think it is absolutely wonderful. So then you sew um, from here and then it's detached here and then you sew it against the head. And one of my arms came out a little bit longer than the other. I think um, either I did an extra row on accident or I just the way that I stuffed it. So I have one that's a little bit lower than the other arm. So that way it doesn't catch your eye, but you can't, you wouldn't be able to tell if I didn't tell you. And so that's how Psyduck normally is because Psyduck's like this. Like he's like, Psyduck. He's like, you know, a little psycho. So that one is Psyduck. And then up close. And I used a size F hook. I think it's a 3.75 millimeter hook. And I stuffed all of these with polyfill, which actually this takes a lot of polyfill. I would say that you would probably need more than one bag of polyfill because I use this for other projects. I would say you might be able to get away with one bag of polyfill or you might need more. I'm not sure. And this is what the yarn looks like. It's very velvety as I have my box right here. And then if you do go to Hobby Lobby, the uh, this is what it would look like from Yarn Bee. So, anywho. So this is Jigglypuff. So I did Jigglypuff first, actually like a while ago. Um, and then I had to do Psyduck. And then I took about, I don't know, about four weeks off from crocheting. And uh, because we started homeschool and I just kind of gave everything to us kind of getting into our new routine for fifth and first grade. So you do the ball. It's basically Jigglypuff is this giant ball. Then you have two feet, two arms the ears, so then you have these uh, black velvety smooth yarn, which is separate. And then you, um, I'm sure that you could hot glue it on. I sewed it on. And then you have this large tube up here, which you, which kind of curls, but then you hot glue it down. So that way the curl kind of stays more pronounced and then you sew it on. Then for the eyes, I used uh, a template with like my headlamp. Cause I have a headlamp that I use for when I cross stitch. And then at the bottom of a, like a tacky glue and then yeah and then this is just a uh, embroidery thread so I'm really happy with how this came out my only wish is that the eyes were more smooth and less jagged but I am happy with how my proportions came out because I couldn't use the templates that were provided in the book because I made oversized versions this is not the called for um, yarn I just decided to go with it because it is so smooth. So this is using black and blush, I believe. I believe this is in the color blush. So you, if you do this, you'll need two skeins of blush and you'll need two skeins of mustard. Um, and I crocheted that, like I said, using a 3.75 millimeter crochet hook. So yeah, I love, 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 love. And my kids are so thrilled. They can't wait for me to do this video so that way they can go play with it. So this is the book. This book has been out for a while. There are a lot of um, Pokemon patterns out now since this book has been released, but back in 2020 when I bought the book, this was kind of it. And this woman, Sabrina Summers, who wrote the book, is one of like the first people on Instagram and on Ravelry who made Pokemon patterns. So when you get the book, you'll have a bunch of different people that you can make. And it says, bring your favorite Pokemon to life with 20 cute crochet patterns. And they go from difficulty le levels of beginner, easy, intermediate. And the intermediate is quite extraordinarily intermediate. Um, you have Charizard. And then you have, I think, a lot of the evolutions of Eevee. You have Magikarp. Which I think would be fun to make a magic heart. You have the Porion. Lapras. Jolteon. And so what she'll do, I'll show you Psyduck. So for Psyduck. She gives you the official colors that you would need, the difficulty level, 
And if you're using her gauge, then you would need, like it has the Pokemon index, what type is a water type. And poor Psyduck suffers from relentless headaches. No one is certain if the psychic powers it uses are intentional or if they just get out of control sometimes. The called for hook size is a 2.5 millimeter hook. And then there's um, a certain amount of grams of sheepies yarn that you would need. Fiber fill, white felt, black textile marker, and thin black yarn. And then the finish size, if you were to follow her gauge, should be about five inches, which is way smaller than mine. And this is what hers finish looks like. Look like. And then this is what mine looks like. Which I have to say, looks pretty much the same. I'm really, really toot toot. Please with myself, I'm tooting my own horn. Then let me show you uh, Jigglypuff. So Psyduck, um, it says that you would need four colors, but you just need three colors of yarn. Oh, this one's Flareon. This one looks so hard. Only because you'd have to brush all the yarn out, and I really don't want to do that. Like, I was excited uh, like a while ago to make Evie, but I really just, I don't know. I don't want to be bothered to do that. So... Let's see. This one's Snorlax. I would totally, can you imagine Snorlax? Like all in that super soft velvet, velvety yarn to be so fun. Okay, so then this is Eevee. And, or not Eevee, Jigglypuff. And Jigglypuff is supposed to be an easier one. So this is Eevee. Oh my gosh, I keep saying Eevee, Jigglypuff. So this is what the designer's Jigglypuff looks like. And then there's mine. I think I did pretty good. Oh. <laughs> Anywho, yeah, so really happy. Um, okay, so what are my thoughts? What are my reviews versus just sharing, right? What I recommend. Um, I have made Oh, I have made another Pokemon and it was when my daughter was four. I made a Pikachu and a Pokeball off of a pattern. And I don't know whose pattern it was. It could have been a Sabrina Slippers pattern from when, from back in the day. Cause that would have been around 2016. Um, and that came out. Okay. That was one of my first Amigurumi projects. Having done like so many Amigurumi since then, I could fill in the blanks. If you were to pick this up and not be uh, an expert or an intermediate crocheter, um, even just like an average crocheter, like I think I am, three and a half, three, three and a half out of five. There were some things in here where I was like, what are they saying? I think for the sake of cohesion, they left things minimal, uh, but there was more to be desired in explanation. As usual, I think when you get into a production like this, you want your patterns to look a certain way. So for aesthetic reasons, they take some instructions out. But when you're, you know, as the customer, as wanting to replicate what you're making, uh, I I want more from you. I want more instruction. So if you don't give me the, the extra pictures or the extra help or the extra instruction to complete the desired look that I bought this for, uh, I'm not too pleased. So that took off a lot of points for me. So, uh, that's a three and a half out of five. Maybe even I might be being generous at three and a half because honestly, it probably is more like a three because there were just things that I had to just figure out myself, which is fine, but I don't want to do that if I'm buying your pattern and if I'm paying a certain amount of money for your book, especially if I'm going to promote it on my channel. So this part of Psydex hands is not how she tells me to do it because I couldn't figure it out. I... I don't know. There was just not enough instruction there. Like there were pictures, but the pictures were just like refer to the pictures to complete this. And I was like, I don't understand what you're doing. So you know what? I'm going to go for a three. Maybe let's do a 3.25, but that's ridiculous. So a solid three to three and a half, depending. Three for Psyduck, three and a half for Jigglypuff. I think that's fair. So either way, I did get the desired look that I wanted. However, a lot of that was figuring it out as I go to making a lemonade out of the lemon. So yeah, super happy. My kids are super happy. They're going to be so happy that I made this video, like I said, because they want to just snuggle their Pokemon. So I hope you enjoyed today's video. Uh, so happy. 
I am thrilled with how these turned out. I would love to make more plushies, um, more regular patterns, but like bring them to life with this velvety yarn. The velvety yarn is a little bit uh, tricky because um, it is a good price and I really do like it. I don't know how long this will wear because I've crocheted with it, but I haven't had a long lasting, like I haven't had anything to last with it. So I don't know how wear and tear this yarn is, but what I will say, is when you are having to tighten something uh, like in a magic circle. So when you're doing a magic circle, just be careful with your tension and how you're trying to bring a circle in because this will break. Um, secondly, if you have to undo something, you can probably only undo it once, maybe twice. But after that, if you make a mistake a third time, you might as well just restitch it. So keep that in mind. If you do choose the velvety yarn, I do think it is a lovely. Um, it, it, I like the color range that they have and I like feeling it. I think it's a great feeling and I think it's a great value for my money. So thank you, you guys so much for watching. Comment down below which Pokemon is your favorite Pokemon. My favorite Pokemon is Snorlax and uh, my kids are absolutely obsessed with Pokemon. Are your guys' kids obsessed with Pokemon or are you obsessed with Pokemon? That's totally fine too. Thanks for watching you guys. If you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel so you don't miss my next video and give it a thumbs up so that way other people will see all the Pokemon I caught. Gotta catch them all, right? All right guys, see you in the next project in the next video. Bye.